بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه All praise due to Allah and His blessings and peace and praise be upon our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his family and his followers until the Day of Judgment My dear brothers and sisters the Magnificent Sevens they are the best of the best. They are very unique people. They deserve to be role model. They deserve to be role model for our youth, for our society. Their footsteps to be followed. Their characteristic to be studied. And for all of us to learn from them how to be better Muslim, better individuals, better citizens in our society and in our communities. My dear brothers and sisters, we'll talk about the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as Abu Huraira radiallahu anh narrated to us that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, seven are whom Allah would put them in his shade in the day of judgment or in the shade of his throne in the Day of Judgment. And they are a just ruler, a youth who grow up with the worship of Allah, a person, who, a person whose heart attached to the Masajid, two persons who love each other and meet each other and depart from each other for the sake of Allah. A man who an extremely beautiful woman seduces him and he rejects her offer by saying, I fear Allah, ma'ad Allah. A person who gives in charity and conceals his charity to the extent his left hand will not know what his right hand is giving. And a person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, solitude alone with nobody watching him and he will start crying and his eyes well up those are the seven categories we are going to talk about we are going to focus on let's start with the first one the just ruler just ruler first of all i would like to define the meaning of the word just, what justice means. And by the way, the definition of justice is very, very important. Justice in Islam means to put everything where it belongs. Justice in Islam is to put everything where it belongs. If you put it where it doesn't belong, you will be committing injustice. But if you put it where it belongs, that's what considered justice in Sharia, in the Islamic Sharia. And this definition is very important for us to understand the meaning of just ruler. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that shirk is the greatest form of injustice. Because worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. So, worshipping belongs to Allah. So if you give it to other than Allah, you became it, you committed injustice. This is not fair, because Allah, the only one, deserves to be worshipped. That's why shirk consider the greatest form of injustice. So, just ruler. Ruler, here apply to the president, to the head of the state, to the king, to the caliph, 
to the person in charge of the society and the community, but also ruler can be way less than that. The ruler, the person who has responsibility, the person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him in charge of a group of people. This can be while people in a simple form like traveling, when people traveling together and choose somebody to lead the group while they're traveling, or the head or the manager of a department in uh, any place, or a person in charge of the Muslim, in, the, in the community, like uh, the president of the society, in, uh, as we see in so many uh, places in the Mus uh, uh, where Muslims community live as minority. We see there is a person in charge of the society or the community. So anybody Allah give him responsibility, anyone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him responsibility, he will be considered a ruler. He will be considered a ruler. But the right of this ruler different from the top rulers like the caliph or the president. It's different from somebody in charge of a group of people like managers or a head of the Islamic center or the imam in the masjid. Everybody has his own rights and we should not mix between uh, these different position, but all consider our people or consider as people who has responsibility, and they will be asked about this responsibility. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala clarify and emphasize on the important of being just in so many verses, such as Ya Dawood inna jalnaka Khalifa fil ard. خليفة في الأرض فاحكم بين الناس بالقسط ولا تتبع الهوى فيضلك عن سبيل الله O Dawood, we have made you Khalifa in earth, a caliph, a ruler and uh, therefore, therefore judge between people or judge between them or make your judgment between them based on justice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena, lil, kunu qawwameena bil qisti shuhada'a lillah. O who you believe, stand with justice, apply justice, apply justice. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa idha hakamta fahkum baynahum bil qist, inna Allah yuhibbul muqsuteen. If you judge between them, judge with, between them based on justice, being fair, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْصِطُوا When you make peace between or uh, an agreement between two groups, make sure that this agreement based on justice, based on justice and fairness. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ We have sent our messenger with clear sign, with clear sign that they are prophets and messenger from Allah. وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ And we have given them the book and the mizan, which is the balance. The balance is the symbol of justice. That's why in court they all put the skill. The skill, we have sent them with book and scale. So the scale is always represent justice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said it clearly, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ Allah order you to be fair and just. Order you to be fair and just. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ There are so many verses in Quran ordering us and telling us about the importance of justice and emphasizing on the role of the ruler. In the Prophet ﷺ tradition, there is, always, there is also so many other hadith and narrations telling us and emphasizing on this point the importance of being just. Such as, what did Imam Muslim rahimahullah reported in his Sahih that Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As رضي الله عنه وعن أبيه said that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن المقصطين على منابر من نور 
عن يمين الرحمن عز وجل يوم القيامة. Those who are just will be on the right side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment sitting on manabir, high chairs made of light, made of light. And those who are just in what? Listen carefully. هؤلاء الذين يعدلون في حكمهم وأهليهم وما ولوا وما ولوا Those who are just in their judgment if they are judges or rulers and also their family we talking here about father we talk about mother we talk about somebody who taking the custody of an orphan boy or girl he's just with them and the third category the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَا وُلُّوا And they will be just in any responsibility that they will be given. In any responsibility that they will be given. Like managers, somebody being given the responsibility to lead the Muslim community or to take care of a company or an employee in a company that he has responsibility and he has to be just. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Three people Allah will not reject their dua. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. And this person who been abused. And the third one, the just ruler. Allah will accept their dua. ثَلَاثٌ لَا يَرُدُّ اللَّهُ دُعَاءَهُمْ مِنْهُمُ الْإِمَامُ الْمُقْصِطِ مِنْهُمُ الْإِمَامُ الْمُقْصِطِ And this hadith reported by Imam Al-Bayhaqi and narrated by Abu Hurair رضي الله عنه. That's why Al-Ulama said, just ruler is the best thing can happen to the community. To have a good and just ruler leading the community is the best thing can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless any society with. Inna Allah yanzi'u bil sultan ma la yanzi'u bil Qur'an. Allah have given power to the people who has authority even greater than the power of the Qur'an. You know, you might tell somebody, do this or not to do that, you re recite for him a verse or two from the Qur'an, but the, um, the uh, effect of this verse, it will not be like the effect of a ruler when he establish a rule and lead the community to do what is good and to stop them from doing what is bad or evil. In Nabi Wasallam said, if you wish, I can tell you about Al-Imara about al-imara, al-imara to be in charge, to be, a, to, be a, to be a ruler or a prince. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in the beginning you will regret it, which you will regret it before you die. There are so many great kings before they die, they said we wish that we never been in that position because they realize it is responsibility and it's something they will regret later on. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then after that, people will be regretted more, will be regretting it more. Then in the end, it will be a punishment. It will cause the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. In Nabi sallallahu said, except those who are just. Al-Hadith hadith al Hasan reported by Al-Tabarani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask everyone. Everyone. Who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him responsibility. Put him in a leader position. He will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he fulfill his duty toward his people, those who is in charge of or not. We'll take a break now. Then we'll come back inshallah to continue our discussion. <laughs> Welcome back. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we heard said, that Allah will ask everybody about his responsibility. If Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give you a position to be in charge of people or to lead a group of people, 
or to be in charge of a community or a society or a state, regardless the size of this responsibility, you will be asked about it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, even the man will be asked about his family. The father will be asked about his wife and it will be asked about his children if he fulfill his responsibility. If he was a right and a righteous and a good leader and a just leader to his family or not. The Prophet ﷺ said, ما من أمير يلي أمر عشرة Any person will lead 10 people, will be in charge of 10 people or more, or more. So even if it's a small group of people, he will come in the day of judgment. يأتي يوم القيامة وقد غلت يده إلى عنقه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said he will come in the day of judgment and his hand tied to his neck. If he was just, his justice will set him free. يفكه عدله أو يوبقه ظلمه and if he was not just, if he was not just, that will lead him to the hellfire. May Allah protect all of us. It will start as something people will blame you for. Malama. Then it will end up that something you regret. Then in the day of judgment, it will cause, it will lead to the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Four people, Allah hate them the most. Arba'atun يَبْغِضُهُمُ Allah. One of them, the Prophet ﷺ said, unjust ruler. And in Nabi ﷺ also said that they will suffer in the Day of Judgment from a great or a severe punishment. A severe punishment. Those who used to, those who used to abuse people in this dunya. In Nabi ﷺ also said, and this hadith reported by Ibn Asakir, من غشر عيته فهو في النار. Whoever betrayed, cheat his people, he will end up in the hellfire. That will lead him to the hellfire. In Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم, as Abu Darda رضي الله عنه related to us and reported by Imam Ahmed في مسنده, إنما أخوف ما أخاف عليكم الأئمة المضلين. The thing I'm afraid from the most that will cause so much distraction to the community or to the Muslim society, a misguided leader, a leader who will misguide their community. Three people, Allah will not talk to them. Allah will not look at them. One of them is the unjust ruler, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not bless them, will not talk to them, will not look to them. And they will face a severe punishment in the Day of Judgment. In Nabi Sallallahu even furthermore said, two kind of people, I will not intercede for them in the Day of Judgment. One of them, Imamun Zalumun Rashub, the Imam who is unjust, the Imam who abuses his people, his follower, the people who are in charge of. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have prayed against those who give their people, the people under them, a hard time who make things difficult for their people. Allahumma man shakka ala ummati, fashquq alayhi. Yani, oh Allah, whoever puts my ummah or any one of my ummah in a hardship, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let him live in hardship. And this is, will not only be in the dunya, in the dunya and in the hereafter. Just ruler, I'm not going to talk about, in details about ruler in a sense of kings and presidents, because that that part of it i believe it's clear but i will talk about something i will i want to emphasize more in our role as ruler and people in charge in different levels in the society as a father as a head of the islamic center for example or a person in charge of the masjid a person in charge of the society or a community a person who have a leadership position in his company or in his work that Allah put him in charge of a group of people. That man, Allah or that man or that woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them about this responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to them. That's why responsibility never been considered by the great scholars or Sahaba radiallahu anhum as an honoring things. 
it's always been re recognized as a, an extra responsibility the person has to carry. The just ruler, the person who called for Tawheed, establishing Tawheed, teaching his followers uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to fight the shirk and to prevent the shirk to be spread in the society or in the community. The person who will apply the Sharia, ah, the Islamic rules to judge all incident, to control the life of people. You know, in the time of Nur al-Din Zinki, when he became a ruler of the Muslim world in that time, he wrote to one of his leader, one of his leader, his name is Kamashtakin. He wrote to him and he said, don't make any rule or make any law in your area unless you take the uh, uh, advice of the chief judge of your city to make sure it's according to the Sharia. In that time, any person who will steal or like highway robber, he will be stopped and might be killed for that. And as you know, the punishment for such crime, I mean, stealing from somebody is not by executing that person, is not the capital punishment in Islam. But in that time, they used to do that to stop this. When Nur al-Din Zinki became the ruler, the judge, the Muslim judge said, this is not the rule of Allah, stop doing that. That person doesn't deserve to be killed. What happened? Some people start writing to the prince telling him that people will not stop stealing or people might not be, uh, 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 be afraid to break the law, make the punishment so severe so people will behave themselves good. They wrote this to Nur al-Din Dinki, then he replied by saying, there is no any good in any rule other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sent down to his people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what will make our life right and straight and in the best way. If you look to justice, how been implemented by rulers, the best example I can give you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And I have chosen today for you an example of an incident. It is so special. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as an Imam Ahmad reported in his Musnad, was lining up the lines in one of his battles, looking at his companions, getting ready for the battle. He saw one of them stepping out. He's not in the line. His name is Sawad. In Nabi Sallallahu had a stick in his hand. In Nabi was carrying a stick. So Nabi Sallallahu pushed him back to be in the line. Sawad has nothing on his stomach. The stomach was not covered. He pushed him. Immediately Sawad said, Ya Rasulullah, you hurt me. Awja'tani Ya Rasulullah. What the Prophet ﷺ did. Immediately the Prophet ﷺ uncovered his stomach to be equal to Sawad and he handled him the stick. And he said, اقتد يا سواد. He said, go ahead and push me the same way I did to you so we'll be equal. Subhanallah. You see, in a society where is the man not afraid to say, I have rights, Ya Rasulullah. A man in the society, he's not afraid to express his feeling and to ask for his right in a such society, in a community, because he knows justice is the rule and is the foundation for this society. In Nabi Sallallahu when he said that to him, the man took the stick. He took it, but instead of pushing or tabbing the Prophet Sallallahu in his stomach, he start kissing the Prophet ﷺ's stomach and putting his cheek on the Prophet ﷺ's stomach, crying and hugging the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ and the companions were surprised by his reaction. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, what are you doing? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I would never think about revenge. I would never think about hurting you in any way. But I took this opportunity to be able to see your skin and to touch it and to kiss it. So the last thing I touch in this dunya, before I go to this battle and I might die in the battle, will be your skin, Ya Rasulullah. So much love, so much passion, so much 
love and believe in this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In a simple, in a simple form, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sitting and Abu Bakr in his left hand side and Ibn Abbas in his right hand side. He was drinking and you know from the etiquette of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you finish drinking, give it to the person in your right. But Abu Bakr is an older man, is a respectful person in the community. So in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ask Ibn Abbas who's just a young boy, would you allow me to give the cup to Abu Bakr to drink before you since he's older? See justice in a very simple form. This is his right, Ibn Abbas, to drink after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa didn't say he's just a kid, who cares? No, he has right. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa just, he said, would you allow me? But what was the answer? Ibn Abbas said, no, ya Rasulullah. If somebody else, I will give it up. But it is that it is drinking after you, Ya Rasulullah. إِنَّهُ سُؤْرُكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَا أُثِرُ بِهِ أَحَدًا Ya Rasulullah, it is after you. I would never leave this opportunity. And I would love to take this opportunity to drink just after you, Ya Rasulullah. When you look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, how they implement justice in their life. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa ardah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ardah. The one who's in his time, justice was implemented to the extent Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was the chief judge of the Muslim uh, state in that time, came to Abu Bakr and said, Ya Abu Bakr, take this is the, uh, uh, this is the place where you asked me to stay in like the court house. I don't want to be there anymore. I don't deserve the salary that I take from you to be a judge. Why, Ya Ali? Why you think he said he doesn't deserve the, the salary anymore? He said, nobody ever came to me with any problem. Look at our court today. Look at the cases in the court that you delay years after years just to take your role or to get uh, uh, in role or to be uh, able to see the judge. But in that time, there is no cases in the court because justice was implemented and people deal with each other with justice. When Abu Bakr radiallahu an became a ruler, you know what he did? He said that, uh, that Abu Bakr radiallahu an when he became a ruler, in the next day he was going out to uh, do his business, the, the regular business that he used to do uh, before became a Khalifa. Then the Sahaba said, you cannot be doing your business. We have to give you a salary. And he took a salary in order for him to stay home so he can uh, look after the Muslims' uh, needs uh, and to be able to uh, look after the Muslims' needs. But this did not stop Abu Bakr from doing what he used to do like going out to the desert to milk the sheep for an orphan family and provide milk for them. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, before his time to be a Khalifa, he was rich. But after he became Khalifa, he became poor. When he died, he said, any extra money I gain during this time, give it to the Khalifa after me. When Umar heard that, he said, Ya Abu Bakr, you made it so hard for the people who come after you. With this I will end with you today and I will see you soon inshallah to continue our discussion about the Magnificent Seven. <laughs>